Good morning, everybody. Today I'm going to do kind of a follow along art tutorial of how I create my flower arrangements and little animals. So if you want to go find your watercolor paper and your watercolors or just your sketch paper and some markers will work or pencils, you can use the same kind of concepts. Um, and of course, I'm just gonna show you how I draw mine. So, <laughs> so if you are ready to follow along in your quarantine time, go get your art stuff. So let me show you what we have. I have, anyway. So I have my sketchbook. I have um, Pigma Micron pens. You don't need these, but I like to, I, I just like to doodle, so I don't really start with pencils, but you can if you want, and then just finish with the pen. Um, and then I just have a really cheapo um, watercolor paint set. I did, however, go and buy one nice brush. I don't like to use the little flimsy brushes. Um, if you do only have the little flimsy brushes, maybe just cut it with a scissors to sharpen it so that it actually has more of like a dense um, point because that's usually pretty helpful. And then water and my messy paper towels that I saved because I don't like throwing them away. So let's get started. Oh. I'm gonna be working at my pace though, so if you need to watch how I do one flower and then pause the video, go ahead and do that and then push play and start along with me again. So we're gonna start on kind of the left side of our page. We want to kind of categorize it in three spots, one, two, three, and that's about how big our arrangement is going to be. So I want my first flower to be over here. So let's zoom in so you can see exactly how I make it. So we're gonna start with a peony right here. And our peony is kinda gonna have a squiggly center. And then as we get to the outside, you're gonna have petals that are kinda, kinda starting to come out. So that's kind of how I do my peony. And then I like to do garden roses as well. So let's go down here to our third, uh, second spot. <clears throat> a garden rose, the difference is the center is going to be kind of like more neat and in a circle, like so. And then the outer petals again are gonna get big. I'm gonna kind of layer a little bit. So that's the difference between my peony and my garden rose. So let's do another garden rose right up here. So, neat little circular center, like that, and then bigger petals on the outside. <clears throat> there we go. And then there's different types of peonies. So this is a closed peony. Let's do an open one right here, kind of going underneath this flower. So um, the open ones, you can see the little uh, pollen anthers. So a, a circular kind of middle with little anthers coming out. Maybe put a little dot on them. Or make them different sizes, it's fine. And then the petals on these ones are gonna kind of be more uh, ovalish, like so. And then I'm gonna put one kind of going underneath there. And then once you kind of have your petals in place, you're going to put other, cause there's a lot of petals on peonies, they start to look layered. So you look something like that. So there we got some peony, another open peony. There we go. So closed peony, open peony. So then let's do some anemones. Um, let's do an anemone right here. And they have a really dark center, very round, very uh, evenly round. And then kind of a squiggly V-shaped um, petals coming off of it. Do, do, do. And sometimes you can, like if you're gonna texture, you can even like, they kind of look like they have like these lines coming down. 
That's only if you want to get really detailed, you don't have to. And then there's kind of a second layer. So then let's <clears throat> tuck one under here, another anemone. And actually, let's make this rose bigger because I've kind of got an unrealistic proportions going on here because anemones are not that big. So then let's hide one of these anemones behind here. So there's your anemones. Let's give this one the squiggles too. Peonies, garden roses. Let's do some simple roses. So this is your garden rose and then you have your more regular, uh, typical roses. Um, so let's do like a little tiny bud and then it's a little protective petal. But then let's do a little open one, so a little like that <clears throat> with its protective petal underneath. And then you could do one step further and do an open one <clears throat> with its outer petals kind of like so. <clears throat> Put it on a little stem, give them a little leaf. There we go. So that's how you would do your regular roses versus your garden roses. <clears throat> and then let's do some greenery down this way. Let's put it in a container. There we go. Then let's kind of spread it out from the container. So let's do a um, Snapdragon a little bud and it's a little protective petal. And then as you get down further, let's do another bud and a little protective petal. Then you can start to give them their shape, a little heart and then a little heart down below. This part will be green, this part will be the color. another one on this side. A little bud, protective petal. Heart, 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 heart. There we go. We've got that going on. Let's do some more <clears throat> simple roses, right? Some, uh, let's see, which way do I want to go? Some greenery right here. And some rose. Then I don't like how flat this is, so I want it to kind of come up like this gradually. So let's do some, another Snapdragon kind of going out this way. Let's do a an enemy, but kind of from a different perspective. Let's pretend it kind of went on. You're looking from the side instead of straight from the front or the front of the flower. So do like your dark center, <clears throat> but then your petal is kind of gonna look a little flat like that. There we go. 
and then you're gonna kind of see it this way and it's not gonna get like so make sure your stems are coming from the center of the flower down there we go and then we'll do one kind of out here too you see that uh, except for this one we're gonna look on straight straight on so see the difference of like looking on it straight on versus if you're looking at the side perspective um, really can help make your uh, drawings look a lot more realistic so your stem is gonna come from the center Okay, so then let's put one more little thing of greenery kind of coming out right here. Then let's do a, <clears throat> this spot can't be empty, let's put some leaves in here. So let's make a little kitty cat behind here. So let's make a little nose, diamond shaped nose. And then the bridge of the nose kind of going out. And then his eyes are going to be right here by the bridge. So let's do some circles right there. And then the tear ducts. And then they have kind of like slit eyes. So let's give them his little slits. The forehead is going to be about an inch above the nose. And kitty cat size and then ears and then cheeks let's do the back of the ears right here some fluffs in the ears bam got our flowers and kitty cat let's get painting all right when we're painting flowers um just think of light and dark. So whatever light's hitting is gonna be a little bit lighter. And whatever is in the shadows is gonna be a little bit darker. So we wet our paintbrush and then pick our first color. So let's do the peony and let's make it kind of more of a pinky blush peony. So I'm gonna get into my pink color and then I'm gonna dab, just color in the whole peony. Sometimes the centers are a little more white, so we're gonna dab away a little more paint, and then we'll go in with the color a little more intense and go right at the inside of the petals. Like that. Then our garden rose, let's make that kind of a lavender-y color. So we're gonna put that lavender -y color all over the garden rose. And then we'll go in with a little bit of a darker purple kind of towards the where the inside of the, the petals meet the inside of the rose. So there's a little bit of shading. And the center of the roses sometimes are a lot darker too. And if you don't like how intense it is, you can always dab your color to lift some of it while it's still wet. <clears throat> we'll make our other garden rose the same color and then we're gonna shade a little with the little darker part and then dab it a little bit Okay, my brush, 
I want this one to be a coral peony, so they have the yellow centers, just like that. Don't have to be very careful. And then clean my brush and then go into kind of a coral color and I'm gonna mix um, a little bit of pink into it also. And on my tray, you can like mix your colors onto your brush and then dab it and see what kind of color comes out. I want it a little more pink. And so that's kind of how you mix colors. I just go on the side of my tray. I don't want it fully wet on my brush, so I'm gonna take some of the color off. And I'm only gonna do the outer petals and a little bit of that center petal. So put the color on the outer petals and then only do a little bit. I'm gonna do that really intensely. And if your brush is too wet, you can go dry it and then kind of um, remix your color until it's like really intense color. Because the more water that's in your color, the thinner it'll come out on your paper. Dip back into my mixed little pile. Again, and again. So then I'm gonna clean my brush and don't have it too wet, but then I'm gonna just kind of circle around and mix the already pink that's already there and slightly get towards the middle, but I don't want the middle to be completely colored. <clears throat> and then you can kind of mix it into your yellow and blend out that yellow like so. I'm gonna go in a little more and go, go back on the outside and make those a little darker. Hmm, lost my color. Gotta remix it. Go. we go. So that's peony uh, number two. Let's go into our anemones. Let's do um, the blue, blue center. Let's try a blue one. So let's go into our darkest blue and maybe a little bit of the black just to get it really dark. And then we'll do that over the center. Oops, that's really watery. I don't want it that watery. Wipe off some of the water and then dip in again to both. I think, yeah. So that's a really, really, really dark blue. And once you've sat it there for a second, you can dab it off so that it can show. And then I want to kind of drag outward with the tip, but not in big, bold strokes. I want to do it in very fine. Do, 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 do. Like so. And then clean off the brush completely. And then go back with a slightly damp brush and just kind of blend out the same upward motion. La, 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 la. And then the back petals, you can kind of shade them with the same blue but leave the tips. We could probably even add a little bit of green towards the center. I'm not picking up any color, there we go. A little bit of green. Even have some towards the center. That's how we would make a white anemone. Let's make a colored one. I like like a burgundy color. Burgundy color is my favorite. So let's go into the burgundy and just spread that through the entire flower, both back and front. 
And then we'll go in at the end and shade. These are really dark and beautiful. And then we'll go in with some purple mixed with the burgundy and then use that to like shade the center. And then color in the back petals are a little darker towards the center. these ones. Uh, we'll do this one burgundy again and then this one like a like a peach color or something. Let's do another burgundy one though. Put this one off to the side. Side perspective. And then your dark purple mixed in with your burgundy on the outer. Let's do kind of a peachy, rusty. Um, flower. It's very watered down. Seeds. Kind of spread that color a little too much. Oops. Then we'll go in with more of a rust for the center. And the shaded areas. Let's do, um, let's do some red roses. So we'll color the bud only, the petals, with the red. It was very watery. I did not mean to make it that watery. Don't do what I did. So I'll just let that dry while I do these other ones. In fact, I'll probably just dab these ones and pick up the water and redo it. See, when you dab it, oh, I smeared. Whoops. And your nails. Got some red flowers. All right, so then we just have our greenery and our snapdragons. So snapdragons look really good in like a pinky color. So then just paint, oop. But really watery again, you guys. What's wrong with my ease? Put the color on the petals. Like so. And we'll just do all of them at the same time and then we'll come back at the end with the green part of the stem. There we go. Now that all of our color is on the page, it's just time for green. And we're just gonna do a very simple, straight up green for all of our green stuff. Mm. 
<clears throat> now I already forgot to color in my vase. I always do that. I always paint it last because I'm forgetful. But it would be easier if you painted your vase first. Now with your snapdragons, it's okay to have uh, get some of the pink into the the green because I think it gives it a fun shaded look. Do the stem. Just attach it to the stem. color just do your best you can always repaint your leaves if you accidentally get the color on them Colors is they're kind of forgiving. Clean your brush really well, and then just kind of get it wet where you messed up. Wipe it away. Okay, what color should we do the kitty cat? Let's do kind of an orange tabby cat. Um, so let's do a nice pink nose. Do, 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 do. Let's do, get it less watered down. There we go. Then let's do. Um, Kind of rust colored eyes. Hmm. Let's make them they kind of look evil. Let's make them kind of yellow eyes instead. Put some yellow over that layer. Too wet. Much better. So orange tabbies kind of let's start with like more of a yellow base for the tabby. Um, doesn't have to be perfect because it's going to be kind of a patchy looking kitty cat. Then Actually, let's make the inside of his ears pink also. And then we'll go in with a let's do a, let's do a peachy tone next. So we're gonna kind of layer the colors on top of the cat. Let's do that. Yeah, it's gonna be very patch, patchy done. And then we'll go in with some orange. 
orangey color. Some of them kind of have like brown tones in the fur, so let's get some brown in there, maybe around the eyes especially. You could do a black cat if you want. You can keep it white if you want. There we go. So the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my pen again. Um, I like to use the Micron brand, the Pigma Micron, because it's really good over paint. And then I like to just go in and define everything once again. So I'm gonna do the center of my peonies. I'm actually gonna add some like texture with some dots. Do, 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 do. Just like that. This just kind of intensifies. Actually, this one didn't have the little lines that I had done on the other ones. I'll we'll add those. You just go right over what I had done before. Doesn't matter if it's somewhat off. <coughs> Excuse me. There we go. And this just makes it look really nice, I feel like, anyway. It kind of gives it a bold look, finishes it. You don't have to do everything, so if something's more in the background, you can leave it undefined. Uh, that way it kind of starts to blend into the back. So that is how I do my flower arrangements and little animals, you guys. What do you think? Let me know um, if you followed along or did it after I showed you. There we go. Just this last one. Add some little eyelashes to the kitty cat. So there it is, you guys. Send me pictures of yours if you want. I'd love to see um, what colors you chose, if you chose anything different. <laughs>